Part 9, The Specific Anarchist Organization, Social Work and Insertion. Social work and insertion are the most important activities of the specific anarchist organization. We have already dealt with, as we have already dealt with, we live in a society that puts the ruling class and the exploited classes on opposing sides. Let us also remember that our struggle is for the establishment of a classless society, libertarian socialism, and that the way to reach this new society, in our opinion, is through the struggle of social movements, their confirmation into the popular organization, and through the social revolution. To this end, this whole process must take place within the exploited classes, which are the true protagonists of the social transformation that we advocate. Thus, if the struggle of anarchism points toward the final objectives of social revolution and libertarian socialism, and if we understand the exploited classes to be the protagonists of the transformation towards these goals, there's no other way for anarchism but to seek a way to interact with these classes. For this reason, quote, anarchism can no longer continue trapped within the confines of marginal thought and claimed only by a few small groups in their isolated actions. Its natural influence on the mentality of human groups in struggle is more than evident. For this influence to be consciously assimilated, it should now be in possession of new means and start the path of social practices now." End quote. In the class struggle, the exploited classes are always in conflict with the ruling class. This conflict can manifest itself in a more or less spontaneous or more or less organized way. The fact is that the contradictions of capitalism generate a series of manifestations of the exploited classes, and we consider this to be the best terrain to plant the seeds of anarchism. Neno Vasco, speaking of the seed sower, used a metaphor to say that the anarchists should plant their seeds in the most fertile terrain. As we have already emphasized, for us, this terrain is the camp of the class struggle. Since we intend to plant our seeds within the class struggle, and because we understand the exploit exploited classes to be the protagonists of the process of social transformation, we assume that for anarchism to reach its final objectives, the exploited classes are essential. When we explain this point of view, we are not idolizing we are not idolizing these classes or even assuming that everything they do is always right, but we are emphasizing that their participation in the process of social transformation is absolutely central. Therefore, we anarchists, quote, must always be with the people, end quote. The way in which the specific anarchist organization seeks interaction with the exploited classes is through what we call social work. Social work is the activity that the anarchist organization performs in the midst of class struggle, causing anarchism to interact with the exploited classes. Social work gives, the gives to the political level of anarchism a social level, a body without which anarchism is sterile. Through social work, anarchism is able to realize its function of being a motor for the struggles of our time. The social work of the anarchist organization occurs in two ways. One, with the ongoing work of with the ongoing work with existing social movements, and two, with the creation of new social movements. Since our founding, we have considered social movements to be the preferred terrain for our activity, as put in our charter of principles when we affirm, quote, the Farge propose, proposes to work immediately and without intermediation in the direction of intervening in the diverse realities that make up the universe of social movements, end quote. As we have discussed above, we understand the social movements as a result of, quote, a tripod made up by necessity, will, and organization, end quote. Thus, organized anarchists must seek to stimulate the desire and organization for a movement that is based primarily on the needs of the exploited classes. These, in most cases, are demobilized by, quote, not having the sense of their rights, nor faith in their strength, and as they do not have this feeling, 
nor this faith remain for centuries powerless slaves. End quote. In this process of mobilization, we have to encourage this sense and this faith. From then, the question of need becomes central because it is through this that, the, that mobilization occurs. Few are those who are willing to fight for an idea that will only bring long-term results. Therefore, to mobilize the people, we must, before anything else, deal with the concrete issues and problems that afflict and are close to them. To earn their trust and adherence, quote, we have to start talking to them not about the general evils of the whole international proletariat, nor the general causes which give birth to it, but their particular misfortunes, daily and private. It is necessary to speak to them about their profession and the conditions of their work, precisely in the locality in which they dwell, of the duration and the vast extent of their daily work, the inadequacy of their, slaver, of their salary, the wickedness of their boss, the scarcity of food, and their inability to properly nurture and educate their family, and proposing to them the means to combat this mis their misfortunes and to improve their position. There's no need to talk too soon about general and revolutionary objectives. Firstly, it's only necessary to offer them objectives the usefulness of which their natural common sense and everyday experience cannot ignore nor repel." End quote. In, this, in the same way, in the process of mobilization, you can pose the question of people not having jobs, of not having a place to live, etc. Therefore, the role of anarchist organization is to explain necessities and to mobilize around them, be it in the creation of social movements or working with existing movements, the central idea is always to mobilize around necessity. Social movements are the instances in which mobilization of the exploited classes takes place. And therefore, it is these movements that cause them to have a political practice. Their political practice is developed through, quote, any activity that has as its, as its object the relationship of confrontation of the exploited and oppressed with the bodies of political power, the state, government, and their various expressions." End quote. Besides other supporting bodies of the capitalist system, political practice seeks to put the people in combat against the forces of the system that opposes them and, therefore, incites the facing off of these forces. Quote, the defense and expansion of public and individual freedoms the capacity for proposals that correspond to the general interest of the population or partial aspects of it, end quote. Political practice can also be, quote, insurrection as an instance of violent questioning of a situation we want to change, and also the proposals which, taking in the popular demands facing the bodies of power, can present solutions to general and specific questions and require those bodies to be able to adopt them and make them valid for the whole of society." End quote. Through their political practice, social movements must impose all their conquests on the forces of capitalism and the state. The people themselves must demand, enforce, and realize all the improvements, conquests, and freedoms desired as is felt necessary by means of organization and will. These demands must be permanent and increase progressively, each time demanding more and seeking the full emancipation of the exploited classes. Quote, whatever the practical results of the struggle for immediate improvements may be, their main usefulness lies in the struggle itself. Is it, is it through it that workers learn to defend their class interests? that they understand that the employers and governments have opposing interests to theirs, and that they cannot improve their conditions, much less emancipate themselves, if not by joining together and making themselves stronger. If they can get what they want, they will, they will live better. They will earn more, work less, have more time and energy to reflect on the things that interest them and they will suddenly feel more needs and desires. 
if they were not successful, they will they will be if they were not successful, they will be impelled to study the causes of their failure and to recognize the need for greater unity, increased energy. They will understand, finally, that in order to win securely and definitively, it is necessary to destroy capitalism." End quote. The political practice of social movements translated into the struggle for short-term gains brings the pedagogical sense of increased consciousness to the militants in the event of victories or even defeats. The political practice of the specific anarchist organization works the same way. We stated earlier that we understand anarchism as an ideology, and in this case, quote, a set of ideas, motivations, aspirations, values, a structure or system of concepts which have a direct connection with action which we call political practice, end quote. Social work is the principal part of the political practice of this anarchist organization that, in this case, interacts with the exploited classes, organized into social movements. Withdrawing anarchism from small circles and widely supplanting its ideas within the class struggle. Besides this, for us, more than simply interacting with social movements, the social work of the specific anarchist organization must seek to influence them in practice, causing them to have certain operating characteristics. We call the process of influencing social movements through anarchist practice social insertion. Thus, the anarchist organization has social work when it creates or develops work with social movements, and social insertion when it manages to influence movements with anarchist practices. Social insertion is not intended to ideologize social movements, turning them into anarchist social movements. By contrast, it seeks to give them certain determined characteristics so that they can proceed toward the construction and development of the popular organization and point towards the social revolution and libertarian socialism. It seeks to make social movements go as far as possible. Quote, we do not want Quote, to wait for the masses to become anarchists, end quote, in order to make the revolution even more than we are convinced that they will never become anarchists if initially we do not overthrow with violence the instructions that keep them in slavery. As we need the concurrence of the masses to build a sufficient material force and to achieve our specific objective, which is the radical change of the social organism, through the direct action of the masses, we must get close to them, accept them as they are, and, as part the masses, make them go as far as possible. This for we want, of course, to actually work to realize, in practice, our ideals, and not to be content in preaching in the desert for the simple satisfaction of our intellectual pride." End quote. We recall that we have advocated the position that it is ideology that should be within social movements and not social movements that should be within ideology. The specific anarchist organization interacts with social movements seeking to influence them to have the most libertarian and egalitarian forms possible. Although we treat anarchism and social movements as different levels of activity, we believe that there is a relationship of mutual influence between the two. This complementary and dialectic relationship causes anarchism to influence social movements and social movements to influence anarchism. When we deal with social insertion, we are talking about the influence of anarchism within social movements. In this respect, despite sustaining a separation between the political, the anarchist organization, and the social, social movements levels, we do not believe that there should be hierarchy or domination of the political level over the social level. We also do not believe that the political level struggles for the social level or in front of it, but with it, this being an ethical relationship in its activity as an active minority, the specific anarchist organization struggles with the exploited classes and not for or in front of them, seeing as though, quote, we do not want to emancipate the people, we want the people to emancipate themselves." End quote. We will discuss further on, in a little more detail, 
this relationship between the specific anarchist organization and social movements. When dealing with social insertion as the influence that the specific anarchist organization exerts on social movements, we understand that it is important to elaborate a little more on what we mean by influence. To influence, for us, means to cause change in a person or a group of people through persuasion, advice, examples, guidelines, insights, and practices. First of all, we believe that in society itself there are, at any given time, a multiplicity of influences between the different agents who influence and are influenced. We can even say that, quote, to renounce exerting influence over others means renouncing social action, or even the expression of one's own thoughts and feelings, which is tending towards in existence, end quote. Even from an anti-authoritarian perspective, this influence is, inevitably, is inevitable and healthy. Quote, in nature, as in human society, which in itself is nothing other than nature, every human being is subject to the supreme condition of intervening in the most positive way in the lives of others, intervening in as powerful a manner as the specific nature of each individual permits. To reject this reciprocal influence means to conjure death in the full sense of the word. And when we ask for freedom for the masses, we do not intend to have abolished the natural influence exerted on them by any individual or group of individuals." End quote. In practical work, that influence, that influence must occur from the characteristics we seek to give social movements. Previously, when dealing with social movements and the popular organization, we discussed these features in great detail. So we are not concerned at this point with detailing them again. We will only point out once more and briefly what the characteristics that we must sustain in the social movements are. They are force, class struggle, combativeness, autonomy, direct action, direct democracy, and revolutionary perspective. Social movements must be strong without falling inside an ideology, since imposing the cause of anarchism on social movements, quote, would not be anything but a complete absence of thought, of objective and of common conduct, and would lead necessarily to a common impotence, end quote. They should be class struggle in orientation and have a class line, which means to seek broad participation of the exploited classes and support the class struggle. They should be combative, establishing their conquests through the imposition of their social force. They should be autonomous in relation to the state, political parties, bureaucratic trade unions, the church, among other bureaucratic and or authoritarian bodies taking their decisions and acting on their own. In addition, they must use direct action as a form of political action in opposition to representative democracy. Quote, fundamentally, it comes to giving priority to the protagonism of the popular organizations, fighting for the least possible mediation and ensuring that the necessary, me that the necessary mediation does not result in the emergence of separate decision-making centers separated from those concerned, end quote. Social movements must also use direct democracy as a method of decision-making, which takes place in horizontal assemblies, in which all the militants decide effectively in an egalitarian way. Direct democracy does not give space to, quote, any kind of privilege, whether economic, social, or political, and constitutes an institutional framework where the recallability of the members is immediately secured, and where, therefore, there is no room for the habitual political irresponsibility that characterizes representative democracy." End quote. Finally, revolutionary perspective which quote, should be introduced and developed in, in it, the social movement by the constant work of revolutionaries who work outside and within its bosom, 
but which cannot be the natural and normal manifestation of its function. End quote. The social insertion of the specific anarchist organization in social movements that occurs through, through influence should point, in a second instance, toward the connection of struggles and the creation of the popular organization, seeking permanently to increase their social force. To carry out social work and insertion, the anarchist organization should pay attention to some questions. Mobilization must take place mainly through practice since it is in the midst of struggle that the people notice that they can win more and more. Much more than talking, we must teach by doing, by example, which is, quote, better than the verbal explanations that the worker receives from, the com from his comrades, quickly recognizing all things by his own personal experience, now inseparable and united with that of the other members, end quote. It is very relevant for us to consider that the process of mobilization and influence passes beyond the objective aspects of the struggle through the subjective aspects. Our practice has shown that in order to mobilize and influence social movements, it is very important to use not only the rational and objective, and objective aspects, but also emotional and subjective aspects. These being the effective bonds and friendships or relationships that are naturally built within struggles. It is also important to identify people in the neighborhoods, communities, movements, trade unions, etc. that have influence over others. Local leaders oriented to the grassroots and legitimized by them and focus efforts on them. These people are very important to assist in grassroots mobilization to give potential to an anarchist influence, or even to integrate into the groupings of tendency. Done in this way, the mobilization ends up functioning as a kind of conversion. It is it being important to note that, quote, you can only convert those who feel the need to be converted, those who already have in their instincts or in their miseries of, the, of their position, either exterior or interior, all that they want to give them. You will never convert those who do not feel the need for any change, not even those who, wishing to leave a position in which they are discontent, are impelled by the nature of their moral, intellectual, and social habits to seek a position in a world that is not of your ideas." End quote. In this process of mobilization, the specific anarchist organization should always, no matter what, act ethically, trying not to want to establish relations of hierarchy or domination with the social movements, to tell the truth and never de deceive the people, and always support solidarity and mutual aid in relation to other militants. Likewise, it should have a pro-positive posture seeking to build movements and cause them to march forward and not just be presenting critical positions. Even when the position of the anarchist organization are not the majority, they must be shown, making clear the views it advocates. When in contrast with hierarchical movements, the anarchist organization should always keep in mind that what interests it is always the grassroots of the social movements. Therefore, for any type of work, the organization should always approach not the leaders and those who hold the power structures of social movements, but the rank and file activists who generally oppressed by the leadership, who are generally oppressed by the leadership and form the periphery and not the center of the movements. Another issue that must be observed is the militants of the specific anarchist organization must be very familiar with the environment in which they are working, maintaining a constant presence in the social movements in which they propose to carry out social work. The knowledge of the terrain on which one operates is critical to knowing what the political forces at play are, who the political allies are, who the opponents are, where the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are. Constant presence is important in order for the anarchist militants to be fully integrated with other activists from social movements, 
such that they have recognition, legitimacy, are listened to, are wanted, are welcome people. In a strategic framework, we can understand that the specific anarchist organization must carry out social work since, quote, as anarchists and workers, we must incite and encourage them, the workers, to struggle and to struggle with them, end quote. Inciting and encouraging the people, we must seek social insertion and insert and ensure that the social movements work in the most libertarian and egalitarian ways possible. With social insertion in social movements, we must connect struggles and build the popular organization. Thus will we be able to stimulate the permanent increase of social force and prepare the exploited classes for the social revolution because, quote, our goal is to prepare the people morally and materially for this necessary expropriation. It is to try to revive the attempt as many times as revolutionary agitation gives us the opportunity to do so until the final victory, end quote. With the establishment of libertarian socialism. We can say then that the function of the specific anarchist organization in its social work and insertion is to be the quote, engine of social struggles an engine that neither replaces nor represents them, end quote. We think it possible to construct this motor, quote, participating militantly in the day-to-day -day of the struggles of popular movements in activity, at first in Brazil, in Latin America, and especially in Rio de Janeiro, end quote. 